This is our cat litter box Tetris. We live in an apartment, so it solves three problems. The so-called cat litter box smell, super easy to clean and maintain, can put nine litter boxes in an apartment. So this is both cat and human friendly. You're going to find the links to these litter boxes in the description below. I will share the accessories, the stuff that I used in here that made the whole experience a lot more easier, along with the actual setup itself. Let's get started. Hey, it's Melicat. If you're into animals, especially cats, and quirky travel experiences, then you're in the right place. Action! The amount of space is taken up is just under seven feet across, about three feet up, and then depth, it's under a feet and a half. So quite good in terms of saving space. We have three types that's going on. The most popular one is the top loading ones. These ones are very good for controlling tracking. And then I got three of these litter boxes, the regular ones. Two boxes from Ikea. These are actually just storage boxes. We live in a vertical apartment and these boxes often become their springboards. So far, nothing collapsed, everything's okay. It's also okay when they're jumping from high up and landing on these litter boxes. Just as safe, just as sturdy. Let's see how they like these litter boxes. I line them up side by side so that they can choose between the different cat toilet stalls. As you can see, there's a lot of space for them to turn around and or even stand all the way up without hitting their head. To many cats, this floor to ceiling height is very important. It can make the difference between going or not using that bathroom at all. Traditional litter boxes, so-so for skittish cats because they feel a bit claustrophobic and kind of closed in. Sometimes this is enough to freak them out. It is okay for the other more confident cats uh, because that's not an issue, so it really depends on their temperament. Doesn't hurt to have one or two of these at home though. These open face boxes are good for a few things. One, cats that don't like to be closed in. Two, if you have a bully cat at home that likes to swipe at your other cats when they're doing their business, uh, this will give them a bit more confidence so that they don't feel that they're going to be locked into place when the potential bully is there. But it's not exactly out in the open, open, if you get what I mean. It's also good if you've got taller cats because that way the height of this is only determined by the shelf that you're placing it under. Top loaders are the best for tracking. The grooves catches the little pellets and the cats have to stop there before they get out so it cleans their feet. And look at this, see how she shakes her feet? I find that with the top loaders, the cats have a habit of doing that so it keeps it double clean. See, little tracking by the time they get out. But that said, with the regular lidded litter boxes, it's kind of hit or miss depending on the temperament of your cat. Uh, sometimes eh, you have some and sometimes you're luckier. It really depends on their habit. This one, I don't think it's the best in terms of tracking. But surprise, with the IKEA boxes, um, you have some but it's actually not any worse than the regular litter boxes. Given that these aren't even actual litter boxes, so I'm pretty impressed. As you can see, it's the same results for all of my cats. This itself is uh, pretty consistent when it comes to tracking. Right, Strawberry? Meow! As you can see, after 24 hours since the last scoop, the tracking is quite minimal given that there's nine cats at home. Starting with the top loading litter boxes. Now, all I need is just the regular scoop and a garbage bin. Starting with the top loaders, note that I am using a tofu litter. I have to use a frying rice motion with my scooper in order to remove all of the patties that stuck on the edge. Then when I'm done scooping, I take this and I just wipe and scrub any of the residues that I have. This is an easy way to keep the interiors clean in case you have any picky cats that don't go to dirty toilets. Oh, and this is very disposable. 
support my channel. If you like my content and want to keep my channel alive, all the information's in the description. Thanks guys. The average cleaning time for each of these is about one minute plus or minus. Not too bad. Now moving on to the regular litter boxes. In combination with the frying rice motion, I also toss it like a wok to reveal any of the clusters and the clumps that's at the bottom. Makes it super easy. Clean the inside of the lid if there's any residues. Don't forget to wipe it clean because cats don't like dirty walls. And use the scrubby side. Work on any pea residues that you see that's at the bottom of the pan. There we go. Pretty clean. The only thing with these boxes is there's a little bit of an uneven edge at the back, so things can get stuck, but not too bad. With the IKEA box, this one you just have to fill it a bit higher with litter because the base is a bit smaller, so you need to give it some weight so it doesn't tip over when the cats step on the edge. But the cool thing is that inside there's no abrasive corners, there's no sharp edges, so it's relatively easy to clean if you follow the same protocol as the other boxes. Not bad given that this wasn't even designed to be a litter box in the first place. And did I tell you that these boxes are actually quite big? See? And then by the end of this, all you have to do is just take a wet nap. Just swipe off any of the residues that you have on the scoop. This is an antibacterial wipe, by the way. And here you go. Ta-da! All good. And we're done. For these shells, they come in all sorts of heights and widths and sizes. I'll put the one that we used in the description, but again, you can play with the measurements depending on the exact sizes of your litter box so you can get a near perfect fit. Because they're already quite comfortable with the height of these litter boxes, so I decided to set the height of this rack to be pretty much the same height of these litter boxes. So they don't feel claustrophobic, but they don't feel that they're kind of wide out in the open. Is some cats like a little bit of privacy. Double awards go to the top loading litter boxes in terms of kitty comfort, kitty's willingness to use it, and also how easy it is for the humans to clean up. That includes tracking too. If you're super short on cash, then the IKEA boxes are for you. Not too bad for kitties to use, not too bad to clean up. We use tofu litter, so you see that we don't need the plastic liners. More about litters uh, in another video in the future. Have some of this stuff ready in case there's some oopsies inside the litter box or even just wiping on top. I find that stuff quite handy. I have included my handheld vacuum right here. So in case there's any little bits of tracking that I want to get rid of, it's just right there. We used the robot vacuum from Xiaomi. Surprisingly good. It comes out four to six times a day. And look at how much cat hair and tracking it picks up. Super efficient, highly recommended. All right, so that's it for our litter box uh, Tetris kind of little take apart and introduction here. I hope it works for you guys, especially for you guys who live in an apartment who's got more than two or three cats. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And also, if you guys want to know the kind of stuff that I used in the video, then you can always look at that in the description. See you guys.